The last style bender, Israel Adesanya, has been one of the breakout stars of the UFC's modern era, a striking master with a flair for the dramatic. And for this video, we're going to take a look at 10 things you might not know about the greatest middleweight on the planet. Taekwondo Roots Though his pathway through martial arts would eventually lead him to a dip into many different styles, Israel Adesanya's first exposure to fighting came in the form of after-school Taekwondo classes he enrolled in as a child in Lagos, Nigeria. We don't know how long Izzy spent attending these classes, but at the age of 10, his mother actually forced him to leave due to an injury he sustained. Surprisingly enough, during his teenage years, Adesanya wasn't overly interested in sports, instead preferring to spend his time watching anime and reading comics. Those who know him well well, nowadays will no doubt be aware of his long-lasting love for shows like Death Note and Avatar The Last Airbender, with his own nickname coming as a direct reference to the latter. What you might not know is that Adesanya did not begin kickboxing again until many years later, out of necessity more than anything else, due to persistent bullying through his teenage years. After watching the iconic Muay Thai movie Ong Bak, Israel, at the age of 18, started to learn kickboxing, intent on making his social life a little easier and emulating his heroes on the big screen. Humble upbringing Though he's been surrounded by superb coaches and fellow fighters for the last 10 or 15 years, Israel's upbringing would not suggest that combat sports would be in his future. His father spent his life working as an accountant while his mother was a nurse. He was the oldest of five children in a reasonably well-to-do family in Lagos. Both of his parents have, by all accounts, been as supportive of him as can be, attending his biggest fights. As Israel moved closer to his 10th birthday, his family had originally envisioned a permanent move to the United States, but reconsidered this after the infamous September 11 attacks in New York in 2001. Opting instead to settle in Rotorua, New Zealand, Adesanya spent his formative years struggling to fit in in what was a largely white school. Through this turmoil, however, he was forced to develop the bulletproof mindset that later helped him rise to superstardom. Pressure makes diamonds, as they say. Dancing Shoes it wouldn't take a genius to tell you that Israel Adesanya is an excellent athlete, an incredibly mobile fighter whose range of movement allows him to pull off some of his most effective techniques with little to no telegraphing. And though his natural physical gifts are to blame, namely his length and frame, Israel's long-standing interest in dancing also has a part to play. During his teenage years and well into his adult life, Stylebender has been a devoted student of dancing, often competing in tournaments in New Zealand, before he eventually found his love of kickboxing. And in a truly special moment for his overall career arc, ahead of his UFC 243 victory over Robert Whittaker in Marvel Stadium, Melbourne, he and his old dance troupe performed together for his walkout. That event, as many of you will know, was the most attended UFC card of all time, with a total of 57,100 27 tickets sold. And as far as memorable walks to the octagon are concerned, that was just about as intricate as it gets. A scientific approach. Even this early in the video, I'm sure it's becoming quite clear to you all that Israel Adesanya is a man of many, many talents and interests. And with the support of his parents behind him, who wanted the very best life possible for their children, as soon as he finished high school, he enrolled in the Universal College of Learning in Wanganui, taking a Bachelor of Science in Computer Design. Thankfully, after amassing a hugely impressive record as a kickboxer and a reputation as something of a prodigy, Israel opted to drop out of college to pursue his dream of being a world-class fighter full-time. Obviously, this decision was likely one that was met with some real disbelief, but nevertheless, he persevered. Could you imagine if the world of combat sports was deprived of such a generational talent had he not? A risk that well and truly paid off. Is he the boxer? Most of you will know about Israel's stellar 75-5 kickboxing record, a run that saw him carve out a reputation as a top-10 middleweight under the glory banner, while also having success at both cruiserweight and middleweight. But Stylebender wasn't afraid to test himself in the boxing ring. Taking six fights in the squared circle in 2014 and 2015 was that he didn't waste any time in getting his hands dirty, debuting against the two-time Australian champion Daniel Amon. Izzy would lose the fight by what was a controversial unanimous decision as it looked like Adesanya had done enough to win himself what would have been a huge victory. However, it wasn't to be. And while he would win his five final fights as a boxer, he refocused himself purely on kickboxing and MMA from 2015 onwards. A Major Setback 
Adesanya officially retired from kickboxing in 2017, determined to make his ongoing transition to MMA his number one priority after amassing a 9-0 record in the cage. However, his final outing in the ring came with a knockout loss against the current number one light heavyweight and number six pound-for-pound -pound in the world, Alex Pereira. The fight itself was going pretty well for Israel, but in the third round, the powerful Brazilian found his mark with brutal consequences, ending the fight there and then. Now, of course, Adesanya has gone to achieve great things in the octagon. But what's truly interesting here is that Pereira has followed him to the UFC, determined to work his way up the middleweight rankings to secure an MMA matchup against his old rival. It's hard to know if he'll pull it off, but man, is that a story or what? Taking his time. Adesanya's rise from debutante to UFC contender was as quick as can be, something we'll dive a bit deeper into later. But it might surprise some of you to learn just how long it took for Izzy to start finding his momentum in MMA. Upon debuting as a pro in 2012 with a first-round knockout, it took another 15 months before he made his second appearance, once again scoring a first-round knockout. At this point, it was mid-2013, and his kickboxing career was really starting to take shape. So while he didn't neglect his study of Brazilian jiu-jitsu wrestling in the any other facets of mixed martial arts, it would be over two years until he made his next walk to the cage, going 3-0 with a victory over the future UFC fighter Song Kanan in August of 2015. Slow and steady certainly wins the race, and for Adesanya, his ability to dip in and out of multiple combat sports allowed him the freedom to take some real control over the speed of his ascent. A violent streak Israel Adesanya is certainly always likely to find a finish, but on his most recent stretch, his knockouts, though not as regular as they once were, are generally caused by a buildup of damage, rather than a Dan Henderson-style one-shot H-bomb. But prior to his signing with the UFC, the last stylebender had the resume of an absolute assassin, going 11-0 with all knockouts, six of which came in the first round. Those guys on the regional scene clearly had absolutely no idea what to do with Izzy and his endless bag of tricks. And through his slow, measured ascent to his eventual UFC call-up, by the time he arrived to the top flight, he had perfected the transition from striking to the more multifaceted world of the octagon. Ensuring he had minimal holes in his game was always a major priority for Adesanya, and based on what we've seen so far, it shows. A Debut Statement when Israel's UFC debut finally did come, it came at UFC 221 in Perth, Australia, an event that was headlined by his future opponent Yoel Romero, who brutally finished Luke Rockhold in the main event. For Izzy, a spot on the Fox Sport 1 prelims would have to suffice for now. And though his opponent Rob Wilkinson was the underdog going in, the stylistic clash that came from stylebender striking and Wilkinson's heavy wrestling and submission game certainly allowed us to get an idea of where Adesanya's skills were at coming in. His second round TKO managed to earn him a $50,000 performance of the night bonus. And while, sure, that was the biggest story to emerge the following Monday, what was truly interesting is how Israel managed to deal with Wilkinson's relentless takedown attempts. On 15 shots turned in by his opponent, Adesanya defended 12 successfully, which, although only 80%, at least showed us that he was a very competent anti-wrestler. He would, of course, prove himself to be very difficult to take down, at least at 185 pounds, but for those who tuned in to watch his debut, the early signs were that he was going about his transition the correct way. No time to waste Considering just how successful and famous a fighter he has become, it's crazy to think that Izzy's debut against Wilkinson came in February of 2018. After a quick turnaround victory over future contender Marvin Vittori, he would take on his first ranked opponent, Brad Tavares, in his third fight just three months later in July. His first crack at a UFC interim title came in April of 2019, as he battled with Kelvin Gastelum over five rounds, before, in October, he would hoist undisputed gold over his shoulder by knocking out Robert Whitaker. Between debut and his capture of the UFC middleweight title, Adesanya fought and defeated seven opponents in just 19 months, elevating his stock as both an athlete and a crossover celebrity with each passing victory. Again, when you actually stop and think about it, it's insane just how suddenly Adesanya came on the scene and captured our attention. Now, just over three and a half years in the UFC, to say that his time in MMA has been a success story would be putting it lightly. A future Hall of Famer, that's for sure.